Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. This is the first time I've been able to come outside and sit in like three or four weeks. It's been brutal weather. Uh, the humidity finally broke today. It's not like a million percent humidity. It's actually quite nice out right now. But anyway, I wanted to, to show you guys the blood python clutch. What I decided to do is switch it into two videos. So this is part one of two. Uh, we're gonna look at the first 10 babies today. And as you guys selected in the community section, we had a poll, about 45 of you voted, I believe, 71% chose a shorter, more concise video. So that's what we're gonna do. Make sure you're always watching the community section. Sometimes I give stuff away. Sometimes I make announcements. Sometimes I have polls. Sometimes I'm posting pictures. So just keep an eye on that section so you guys don't miss anything that's coming up. So here's the first half. The second half will follow uh, probably in a week or so from now. So stay tuned. All right, so this here is baby number one. First baby to hatch is a T-positive 007. Uh, this whole clutch, as I mentioned, is pretty, uh, pretty not nice. So you can see the tension in this baby right away. Um, just not really very tolerable of touching. Really, really like, see that? Really, really like when it's like this here, where you can see all that pattern along the side. Um, I just wanna make sure the baby doesn't fall, of course. Uh, I like the speckling on the back. That's really cool on this animal. And let me see if, You can see a little there, down through here, all the sides. I really, really like that. So that would be uh, my qualities on this baby that I really, really like. Personality, obviously, not so much. So this is baby number two here. This one is a T positive, no golden eye gene. Uh, nice coloration so far. I really, really like the saturation in the neck area here. Um, this one I might, let me see, and I was getting increasingly agitated. I thought maybe there's a chance I could pick this one up, but I don't want it to freak out too much. Um, I like some of the darker colors coming in on the sides. I don't necessarily see matrix in this animal. Um, I'll try to maneuver it a little here and it's not going to cooperate, but, um, Yeah, I don't see it in the neck. I don't see uh, the thicker eye stripe. I just don't think. A lot of the babies that are matrix were, were 007, so I think that's where they primarily ended up. But still a nice looking animal and very busy bodied. This one is number three, another T positive 007. I'm gonna try to make a slight adjustment here so you guys get a little bit better view. So bear with. But really, really love the tail pattern in there on this animal. I'm gonna try to get down even a little bit lower. Just trying to change the camera angle a bit so maybe you can see a bit more of the animal sides here. Uh, the saturation on the neck of this animal too, uh, I think is going to pay dividends in the future. Let's see if I can get this one on the move. So the, all through there, that saturation, I'm trying not to block the light here. You can't block the end of the table. No, come on. Um, but yeah, so that's all gonna go real pink as this animal gets older. It's gonna be a very, very nice looking animal. And uh, we'll see, this one might be one I hold back. I really love the big oscillating sides. So this is baby number four. Uh, another T-positive animal. This is an animal I think would make a really interesting adult. Uh, I just, something about this animal, I feel like it's gonna really, really fill in with color nicely. Uh, you know, obviously time will tell and, and it's always a bit of a guessing game. And sometimes you pick really right and sometimes you pick really wrong. But I think this animal is gonna come in with very, very strong reds along the back. And then towards its tail end, all I wanted to do is move until I want it to move. You know, it's got some nice purples in through there that I think will accent with a little age. And then that white, I think, is gonna really make whatever red down there later on pop. So I think this will be an impressive animal. And it's got quite a bit of white along its sides too. Uh, so I think in general, I think this will be a neat patterned animal and probably a pretty spectacular adult. On to number five here, another T-positive 007. Really cool one in my opinion. Uh, got a really pink head already, which is not gonna show up no matter what. 
Also, white's not really the most ideal background for these animals. Black is probably a better choice, but white's what I've got. Uh, and it's, it's better for the Borneo, so that's kind of what I laid out. But the tail pattern on this animal is really spectacular. And you can see that this animal is very, very moody and uh, flattening out and putting itself in a position to strike. Uh, the other ones have been really good so far, considering this clutch, this whole clutch came out real nasty. This one right now, though, is very, very agitated. Uh, but yeah, that patterning on the side there is really quite cool. I really enjoy the way that that, that is and all the way down the side of the animal, which you probably can't entirely see. And I'm probably not going to be able to coax this animal to move the way I want it to. But, uh, but yeah, really, really cool animal that uh, another one that would probably be on my list I would like to keep. So quickly, this is the same baby again, but just to show you kind of the difference of how the color kind of pops a little bit differently on black than it does on the white. Uh, there that is. And then we're going to put uh, old Miserable here back in Miserable's tub. And you can see just a different level of pop. I got to make sure it doesn't get out. All right, so number six here, I think, is a, another good candidate to really get some nice reds, especially down through the back here. And then it's got a nice little pattern going on down the tail area. Uh, this is an animal that, in my opinion, already looks pretty nice right now. And uh, obviously hasn't shed yet. I don't remember. A few of these have eaten. I don't remember specifically if this one did. Let me try to look real quick here. Uh, this one did eat a few days ago, uh, so this one has had a first meal, but just uh, really, really enjoy the tail pattern, especially here. And of course, we're going to get this one on the run. This one doesn't look overly violent right now, though. Of course, as soon as I say that, things will change. But yeah, no, this is uh, just an interesting, interesting looking baby here. Big baby, too. This thing's over 100 grams at hatch, which is pretty good size at hatch. All right, lucky number seven here. Uh, another cool baby, and all of these I really do expect to color up quite nicely, both parents. Obviously, Dad is a, is a T-positive 007, so you can't see the red, but there is red uh, significantly behind both of the, the lines of these animals, Mom and Dad. So I expect all of these to be at least, uh, you know, above average for sure. Uh, but I expect a lot of them to be really nice. And I really dig the pattern inside here that you can see and the pattern along the neck there um, that you may or may not be able to see. Uh, I, think, I think this animal is going to look really, really cool as it ages. And this is another one that's pretty nervous, but uh, they've really calmed down immensely. They're not firing strikes for no reason like they were when they first hatched. So, you know, these, these snakes have become kind of you know, where you can handle them at this point a little bit. Okay. So once again, I don't care if I get bit, but if I push the animal to the point where it's biting me, then I've, I've violated its trust at that point, And then that's not good for our future. I don't want to do that. I want this animal to be picked up by me and realize, hey, this is not so bad uh, and we're going to be okay. And so that's, that's the goal with this, with the hook and being careful handling them. You can see how nervous the animal's becoming right now. If you were to pick this animal up and grab it, you're really gonna probably trigger a defensive response. And then once it has to be defensive against you, it's always gonna be on the defensive until it learns otherwise. So you just fight an uphill battle that you don't, you don't have to fight. So yeah, this is a pain in the ass sometimes to work with them this way, uh, but it is for a purpose and it's worked dividends for me. I've only had one snake ever that I've hatched that I've had any kind of problems with. Everything else has been really great with a little bit of time. See? Just gotta be a little patient sometimes. All right, on to baby number eight, another T-positive 007. So ironically, what I wanted out of this clutch was golden eyes without matrix. Uh, with T-positive 007 being technically the best animal I could make in this pairing, as far as morphs go, uh, and the odds that I hit were insane. And I hit so many T-positive 007s. On any given year, I would be so excited, but with my goal in this clutch was to have isolated golden eyes, and we didn't do so hot on that. And you'll see by the end of the video how many I got, and it's gonna surprise you. Uh, but really love the side patterning all the way down this animal from the neck on down. Very, very busy 007. 
Uh, you know, and I have them ranging in this clutch from almost no pattern or very, very small pattern to busy animals like this, where you've got all the pattern along the back and kind of dirty and, and really, really cool in its own right. Let's see if we can turn this animal around. This is this animal is a little bit more high strung uh, than some of the others. You can see how flat it is and how it's not really trying to run. It's just holding ground because it's nervous. Really love what's going on down there. I love how the T positive double sevens often have this thicker stripe of pattern down there on the sides before it breaks up into this. And I love how it's coming up the sides there. Really, really cool animal. So this is baby number nine, and this is the goal of this clutch right here. Golden eyes. Really, really cool, kind of lower expression golden eye. It almost has the subtle hints of a T positive 007, but this one is a golden eye. Uh, and it absolutely fucking hates my guts, of course, because this is the absolute animal that I'm going to keep from this clutch, and uh, it just wants me to die. Really, really amazing patterned animal. And uh, you can still see a little bit of weight in the back of their tails while they're absorbing. You can see the way this animal is moving. It is looking to bite, uh, no questions asked. It's a very, 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 very high strung animal, uh, but very, very incredible looking, as you can see here. Look at the other side of this animal. When this thing explodes with color, I'm gonna put a picture up showing my previous golden eye from last season, how she looked at this age, and how she looked after she had a couple of sheds. And you guys are gonna see the potential in this animal. This animal is gonna be really, really cool. So hopefully it comes around and stops being an absolute piece of shit. Uh, you know, I'm going to work with it a little bit once the animal's a little bit more comfortable with me doing that. But I really love the dorsal striping with the spotting there. And just, you get that classic kind of 007 broken up lines there. Not 007 in this case, golden eye, excuse me. Uh, but really, really cool animal. Sorry, I'm spending way too much time in this animal. But it's my channel, and it's my animal, so... You guys can enjoy it or not, but I think this is an incredible looking animal. And like I said, you saw that picture, you see the potential. This animal is going to be a superstar in a year or two. And uh, I'm going to make her love me come hell or high water, even if I have to smother her like Lenny and of Mice and Men. I'm going to uh, hug her into loving me somehow. We'll find a way. So last but not least, we have baby number 10. And uh, the words of Carl Weathers, Baby, you got a stew going. Uh, sometimes they like to do this. A lot of people think with the babies that they might be soaking uh, for different reasons. Uh, this is almost assuredly a security thing. It's a tight space. The baby feels comfortable in there. Uh, temperature wise, these guys are in, a, in an ambient controlled room. So this animal's not overheated at all. Uh, obviously no parasites or anything at this point in time. Just uh, just feels secure in there, and so that's where it's hanging out. But we're gonna gonna take her. Oops, sorry. <laughs> take her out, and she's gonna just donut for you there, nice and perfect. Uh, definitely, definitely like this animal. This animal looks really sharp, but I don't think this one's gonna color up as severely as a couple of the other ones that I showed you earlier. Uh, this animal does have really interesting neck pattern going on. If we can just maneuver you around, thank you. I know you're doing fantastic. Uh, so a really, really cool animal, a little nervous, as we said, and, you know, stuffing itself in its water. Uh, it's often done for security purposes. At this stage, I always set everything up without a hide to start. And then I will adjust if I need to, if the animal's not feeding or not taking off. I might move them onto sphagnum moss. I might put them on chip. I might give them different types of hides. But ideally, I like my babies to kind of use their tub it's already a small space, that to be kind of their home base and their hide for a while and try to establish them that way. That way they see me when I come in the room and clean and it kind of helps with the exposure. The room that I have them in, they're only going to have to see me once or twice a day. It's not overbearing. Uh, obviously, if you have these animals in the main room of your house and you have a whole family and all this commotion going on, then it's probably more advisable from the start to give them that security. Uh, but I like to build their confidence this way. Once again, it's been pretty successful for me overall. And so that's what I'm doing. So that is babies one through 10, which is only the first half of this clutch. You'll have to stay tuned to the next video next time and we'll show off the back half of the clutch. 
So let me know in the comments which animals are your favorite, uh, which ones you like, what you saw that you like on these animals. And, uh, you know, then we'll see part two. And uh, we appreciate you guys being here and checking these out. And we'll see you soon.